Hi everyone, I'm Ben from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to the SWTC Show. The third tournament we have in the SWTC this year is the Elf Olympic Games for the Goblympics, taking place on Saturday the 14th of December um, in Cardiff. This one's got a really fun rules pack. It's got a huge build with not a lot of restrictions uh, and a couple of really cool special rules as well. The whole idea is that goblins have taken over the Elf Olympics for this year, which means there's a couple of interesting balls. Let's have a look at the event. First things first, it kicks off at nine o'clock in the morning with the registration. First game is at 9.30 and second game at quarter to 12. There's a half an hour lunch break budgeted for quarter to two with the third game kicking off at quarter past two in the afternoon. Fourth game at 4.30 and then wrapping up quarter to seven for awards and close. So hopefully if everything goes to schedule, you should be done by about 7.30 at night. Four games of Blood Bowl in one day can be pretty full on, um, but the team builds and the special rules are massive in this. So it should give you a lot of, a lot of ownership over your teams, which should mean that you get a lot of play out of them and hopefully not all aware. So let's have a look at some of the special rules for the event. At the start of the tournament, each coach will get two cards. Now, an explode ball and a chainsaw ball. You can use each card once in the tournament and you play it just after kickoff or just after your opponent kicks off and it is in play for the rest of the drive. So the two effects that we have are the chainsaw ball. Some sneaky git has swapped the ball with the infamous chainsaw ball of Gritty Gurgleburger. Mind your fingers, this one's a biter. Timing. Play at the start of any drive, immediately after the ball has been kicked, but before it lands. Effect. Treat the ball as a normal ball, except that any ball carrier has the chainsaw skill for as long as he holds the ball. This gives them the ability to carve someone up, but also grants a plus three to his armor roll if he's not down. Use it wisely, the effect ends at the end of the drive. And the other ball is the Exploder Ball, a patented goblin secret that everlasting Exploder Ball is all the rage these days. Just how do they get it to explode repeatedly? Timing. Play at the start of any drive immediately after the ball has been kicked but before it lands. Effect. Treat the ball as a normal ball except that whenever it comes to rest in an empty spot or after a fumbled pass, pick up or catch, roll a d6. On a 4 plus it explodes as if a bombardier's bomb has just landed in that square. The ball can only explode once per turn it then returns to normal at the end of the drive. So a couple of great special rules for the tournament there. Um, I think I talked about this on the podcast a few episodes ago, ago about the idea of having cards that you give out to coaches at the beginning of a tournament that have an effect at one point. It gives them a bit of ownership and when that happens and it gives you a chance to introduce some crazy special rules without having it overwhelm the entire tournament. So there's the two different bomb balls but there's also one other tournament special rule. And that is that before each round, there will be a weather roll made by the referees. The weather roll will affect every game being played. If a changing weather roll is rolled by the players who are playing the round, ignore it and instead use the below kickoff event. So this replaces that one. Change of mood. The crowd at the Elf Olympics are a capricious bunch, with today's favourites being tomorrow's losers. A particularly perfect pose or fumble pass can be the difference between love and loathe with this lot. So if you roll this event, you both re-roll your fans so this can and probably will alter which player has fame which is quite a cool little special rule so we've got two individual special rules that by themselves are quite limited but um, we'll have a good flavor feel for the day i like changing number seven changing weather and having add a little bit extra something we did it at sewer bowl and we're going to be doing it at sewer bowl and beachhead next year let's have a look at the tournament points on the day so the points, we've got plus four points for touchdown, plus two points per interception, plus one point per completion, and plus one point if the completion was a long bomb, plus zero for each casualty. So you don't get any points for casualties, you get points for touchdowns, interceptions, completions, and long bombs. So this build really does um, want you to play elves, hence Elf Olympics. And if you are trying your very hardest to win an award, let's have a quick look at the different awards you can win on the day. We've got the gold medal for first place, the silver medal for second place, third place gets you the bronze medal, and then we've got the Stunty King, most touchdowns, most completions, most casualties, or the Orc in a Wig award, uh, and there is a participation award for the last place as well, along with some spot prizes throughout the day. 
So a great bunch of awards to be won there by coaches, whether you're going to maim as many people as possible or score as many touchdowns as you can. Let's have a quick talk through the build order. So you get 1,400 gold pieces to build your team, which sounds like a huge amount. There's some cool little opportunities in here as well. So one of the great bits about this is that, that uh, your star players can be taken as part of your start 11. So normally there's a restriction of you can only take stars after you've taken 11. That is not the case for this. This you can include those star players. So you get 1400 and you can run star players as part of your starting team, which is great. It's a good way to encourage coaches to get those star players in. And the second really good thing about the build is that for the most part, you can take skills and stat ups amongst your players um, as part of that TV. So a lot of tournaments are 1100 or 1200 TV and then you get about another 100 to 150 on skills. So you end up running at 1300 TV, maybe 1400. The cool thing about this build is it just said here, here's 1400, go build a team. There are a few restrictions. So we've got a list here of premium luxury skills that cost 40 and discount bargain bin skills, which cost 10. So you can see here, luxury skills, guard, mighty blow, block, leader, and the bargain bin skills, pass block, kickoff return, dauntless, multiple block, strong arm, diving catch, sneaky git, thick skull, hell mary pass, and shadowing. And you can take uh, stat increases uh, uh, according to their normal cost. So strength is 50 and so, so on. A player who has stat increases may not have a total value of more than 150K, including skills, except if they have really stupid bonehead wild animal take root or right stuff. Additionally, no more than three players may be given stat increases. So let's have a look at the elf list I might be tempted to take if I was able to go. As you get 1400, and you can include stars as you're starting 11, it seems like a great opportunity to run the Swift Twins out. Let's have a look. As you can see, we've got player one and player two, the Swift Twins. Then I've got two Elf Blitzers, two Elf Catchers, and one, two, three, four, five Elf Linemen wrapping it up. So that is only 11 players, but uh, the whole aim of this tournament is to score as many touchdowns and to score as many completions as possible. Bearing in mind, interceptions do score points for the other side as well, but still, actually, you're looking like a massive throw game. I've taken three re-rolls, and then it's all skills for the team. So both my elf blitzers have got dodge as an upgrade. Um, that gives them blodge and sidestep. So they're going to be mobile, and they can counter-strike, which is going to be really useful. The two elf catchers who come with catch and nerves of steel, I've upgraded with dodge for a regular skill, and then diving catch is only 10k to take because it's a bargain basement skill. A lot of coaches out there have tried the Elf Catcher Hail Mary Pass combo, where you just uh, level up your catchers to have Diving Catch. You run them forward, they've got eight movement, they can get and they can spread out, and you just two plus, chuck it there, hope for a good scatter, and then you're running uh, a good three plus catch. So to make the most of that Hail Mary idea with the Diving Catch, I've gone big on one of my Elf linemen. He's got Kickoff Return, Strong Arm, and Hail Mary Pass, because they're all bargain basement skills. So for 30k, that player gets all of those bonuses, which means I get the optional kickoff return, so I can move him closer to the ball. If he picks it up, you've got strong arm to make the medium to long passes easier. And uh, if that's not so much of a great idea, we've got the Hail Mary pass to get the ball away or get it up near one of the diving catch catchers. I had a spare 10k, so I run it off on a kickoff return elf again, so I can deploy both those guys in a position that wherever the kick lands, I can actually move an elf three squares closer. This elf, the whole purpose of that one is to pass it off to Valen Swift if he can't get to the ball. So Valen Swift uh, and Lucian, together they're 390. Um, Lucian is loner block, mighty blow, tackle, 7348. So actually I end up with three blitzers on the elf team, but Valen Swift is where it's at. We're looking at 7357. Okay, so five agility, loner, accurate, nerves of steel, pass, safe throw, and sure hands. So Valen's going to be doing all the work. This guy is the classic quarterback. This is going to be a young Tom Brady or, you know, whatever your uh, quarterback of choice is. And um, the whole purpose of this is we're going to have Valen as the main thrower. We've got two proper catchers, two blitzers that can operate really well as well. So that's four fast players with good skills and some supporting linemen there as well. I think that's a really cool build, and I think the, I think the opportunity is there to really have uh, an unnecessarily risky style of play, throw some balls around, and just have a really great day. 
So if you are going to Elf Olympics, uh, let me know what team you're running and um, hopefully you, if you're on the fence you can make it and get there and play some good games. I've had a look at the interested list and there are a few coaches that are sitting on our leaderboard for the SWTC, um, either paid or planning on going. So it should be, when we run the update for this tournament, uh, an interesting event. So thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.